In this tutorial, we'll talk about how to image trace a bitmap or pixel image, so a realistic image, and how to maybe recolor or make it look stylized using the recolor artwork option. So this is our finished product. We have the original image over here for reference, and then we have the traced version that we've recolored. And you may or may not like the recolor, we are just kind of experiment experimenting with this. So I'll go ahead and delete these and show you what I did from scratch. The first thing you should know is I got this picture of this bird flamingo from unsplash.com that has really good photographers all around the world that give their photos to everybody for free to use without restrictions. So you can use it commercially um, for your own projects, even for artwork on your walls at home. So I went and clicked on a picture and downloaded it and now I need to place it into my Illustrator document. We'll go to file and choose place, find that picture and place it into the document. Now I could click and if I just clicked, it'll put it at its um, original size, which is really big. The photos on Unsplash are really high definition photos. We don't need it that big. So I'll go ahead and make a smaller version. And now I just want to Alt or Option on the keyboard and drag a copy of that so that I have this a second version, version of that photo that I can trace. And this is really helpful to be able to see the before and after. Now I want my artboard to fit that photo. So I'll go ahead and use the artboard tool to make it fit, and there we go. All right, so back to the selection tool, I'll just move this around. So again, we have the original, and we can zoom in over here so we can see what's going on, and we have the one that we're gonna trace. Now again, these are really high definition photos, so when we go to image trace it, it may take a long time. You can always reduce the size in Photoshop, or once you click on the photo, up here you'll see the option to image trace, and it'll tell you that you can also reduce the image size by clicking on the photo, clicking the object menu, and choosing rasterize. My computer can probably handle it, so I'll go ahead and click OK. So what this is going to do is it's going to take all of these different colors and it's going to try and put them into vector objects or shapes. Now this first time that you trace it, it's always going to look hideous, especially if you're working with a realistic photo. Don't give up though. What you need to do is start playing with some of the image trace options. So we have different presets we, we can choose from here. And I don't want to click on that yet because if it is one option that'll take a long time, then I can't click on anything else. We can also view different versions of the tracing result. And this option here is to bring up the image trace panel where you can change the same presets. You have the same options up here, but you can also kind of reduce this threshold and add more or less shapes. And depending on the preset, like you have this three colors, six colors and 16 colors. Well, what if you want five colors or 10 colors or 20 colors? Well, these are just presets. You can make your own custom one if you want to, but choosing one of these presets, then you can mess with the options here and you can go to advanced and start messing with the options there. So for right now, I'm going to probably choose, let's see, six colors. So six colors means it'll find the six dominant colors in this image, and it's going to make sure that it fills all the different vector shapes that it can find with those six colors. So it's not going to look pixel perfect. If, you are, if, I was tr if I wanted to try to get as close to the image as I needed to, then I could choose high fidelity. High fidelity is going to make as many shapes with as many colors as it possibly can. That way you still get something that looks like a realistic photo, but it is vector so it can be scaled to maybe the size of a billboard if you needed it to be. So once I did that, notice that it doesn't look as high definition as this, but it is a cool, really stylized version of it. So I kind of like it. If I zoom in, you can see that it tried to find those dominant colors and create them in these organic shapes and layer those shapes as much as it could. Whereas if we look at the original photo, you can see as we zoom in, it starts to get really pixelated. So let's zoom, at, zoom back out. Now with this one, you can just leave the tracing result as is. If for some reason you need to get in there and maybe let's say you wanna delete this dark background or you wanna change some of these colors manually, you can do that by clicking expand and it's gonna break these all up into vector objects that you can manipulate. You can move them around, you can edit, you can change the color. But right now, even though I just did that expand, it doesn't look like I can really do anything because they're all grouped together. So I'll have to right click and choose ungroup. And that way when I click off, I can click on each individual piece 
And now I can come over here and change colors on each individual piece. I can delete it. I can move it if I want to. I can do whatever I need to do with it. So I'll go ahead and undo that because I didn't actually want to ungroup it. I do want to change the color though. So <clears throat> if I wanted to, I could actually copy this artboard and that might be a good idea so I can see everything side by side. I like to copy it as much as I can just because if I want to keep this original version, I don't want to have to undo and, and all that. So I'll hold Alter Option using the Artboard tool and drag a second artboard or, a, well, yeah, it's the second artboard out. So now with this one, I want to recolor it. And I can do that by when I click on it, you'll see this Recolor Artwork button. Click that and you can change each of these colors so it'll change this color to whatever color you choose here or this orange to whatever color you choose here so you can do it manually. You can also randomly change the color order so it's going to still work in the same colors that you have over here but you can change the color order. You can also change the saturation and brightness if you need to. And then if you come up here, notice that you have this set current color as the base color but you can come and let's say we want to change this to a complementary. So the complementary color to red is green. So that's why we're seeing reds and greens here. So if we go to monochromatic, it's going to choose shades of red. If we go to tetrad, red again is a dominant color. So it chooses the three, uh, the two other colors that would be a part of a tetrad scheme. Um, tetrad scheme. Sorry, that's hard for me to say. So you can mess with color groups here, you can mess with these, you can change the brightness on this artwork if you want to, or this particular color. You can click on each of these colors and change them down here with hue, saturation, and brightness. You can also go to the edit menu and change the base color. See, it's changing here. And now we have a tetrad or, yeah, it's a tetrad, not a triad. Um, so we can move those around and try to create something really cool and kind of psychedelic with this flam flamingo. I hope that's a flam flamingo. I think it is. But we'll go ahead and click OK. And there we have a stylized, recolored version of our artwork. So we went from this beautiful, high definition, pixelate, or pixel based image that maybe we can't scale the, to the size we need it to, to a stylized version with only six colors, and then a more stylized version using one of the color schemes. Another thing you should know is if you were to send this to somebody like a client or a printer, they can see these two objects because they have been created as vectors, but they won't be able to see the image unless you embed the image. So you have two options. You can either send them the AI file and then additionally send them the, the image as a separate file, or you can click on this image and choose embed. That, mean, that means that it'll actually embed itself in the file. Illustrator doesn't do that from, from the very first step. It kind of just references that file. So if somebody were to open this without it being embedded, it would give them an error saying that there were missing images that they can't see in the original file. So your best bet is always to embed the image or send the image as a separate email or whatever you need to do for the printer, for a client, whatever it may be.